వెల్కమ్ టు జ్ఞాన దీక్ష కాన్సెప్ట్ బేస్డ్ డిజిటల్ లర్నింగ్ ఐఎమ్ సలీమా అభిషేక్ పిజిటి బయో సైన్స్ పిఎస్డబ్ల్యూఆర్ఎస్ ఆర్కిపురం గర్ల్స్ హైదరాబాద్ చిల్డ్రన్ హౌ బ్యూటిఫుల్ ద నేచర్ ఈస్ ఎస్ నేచర్ ఈస్ బ్యూటిఫుల్ వీ కెన్ సీ మౌంటైన్స్ లేక్స్ రివర్స్ బటర్ఫ్లైస్ బర్డ్స్ సమ్ యానిమల్స్ లైక్ ఫిష్ సమ్ ప్లాంట్స్ లైక్ లోటస్ ఇన్ వాటర్ సమ్ టైమ్స్ వీ కెన్ సీ రెయిన్బో and from small grass to big tree small ant to elephant how wonderful all these are among these some are living beings and some are non living beings yes that both are interdependent for all these plants plays crucial role in balancing environment in a plant different parts are present children tell me which is the most attractive part in a plant yes you are right it's flower in what ways we use flowers in our daily life for puja perfumes different occasions like batkamma and decorations in events we use in different ways right in our life flowers plays important role in the same way do you know that flowers play vital role in plant life also yes today today the interesting topic that we are going to discuss is role of a flower in plant life let us see what are the learning outcomes at the end of this session you will be able to know sexual reproduction in flowering plants parts of a flower and function different types of flowers what is pollination and pollination types fertilization process procedure of seed formation seed dispersal and seed germination let us start our topic with basics do you know children what is plant kingdom the green kingdom on the earth is called plant kingdom or plantae an amazing diverse forms more than 250000 species are there in plant kingdom plantae include all land plants such as mosses ferns conifers and flowering plants ferns are more developed plants than the mosses further the plant body of ferns is differentiated into two leaves stem and roots yes conifers are also called as gymnosperms flowering plants are also called as angiosperms these angiosperms are divided into monocots and dicots in plant kingdom angiosperms are flowering plants these are well developed plants plants are multicellular eukaryotes with cell walls made up of cellulose the most striking and important feature of the uh, plants is their green color pigment called chlorophyll chlorophyll is helpful in photosynthesis process in a plant different parts are present plants parts are root stem leaves flowers fruits and seeds now we will discuss importance of vegetative part in plant first one roots absorbs water and minerals from soil this helps in fixing in the soil second one stem stem helps transportation of water and minerals and food materials leaves third one leaves helps in the preparation of food with the help of chloroplast fourth one flower helps in formation of fruit and seeds fifth one fruits and seeds help in reproduction children do you know what is mean by reproduction reproduction means giving birth to new young ones to continue their next generation reproduction is of two types one is sexual reproduction and the second one is asexual reproduction the first one is a sexual reproduction 
in this process sex cells are formed by the male and female parents these male and female gametes will fuse in this reproduction the organism inherits characteristics from both parents asexual reproduction second one in this process single parent can make a copy of itself in this the new plant will be genetically identical to the parent first type of reproduction in plants asexual reproduction in plants without participation of male and female gametes but producing new egg ones through vegetative paths without forming any seed is called asexual reproduction see children reproduction reproducing new egg ones through vegetative paths like tuberous roots example dahlia and carrot tuberous stem example potato and stolons third one stolons first one tuberous roots second one tuberous stem third one stolons this third one stolons example jasmine and fourth one bulbs example allium sepa means onion next spores example fern plant and fifth one leaves example bryophyllum second type of reproduction in plants sexual reproduction children in sexual reproduction male and female parents release male and female gametes which fuse and form new one especially in plants reproductive organs are present in flowers after pollination fertilization occurs and nucleus forms seeds these seed produce new plant let us learn deeply the role of a flower in plant life in a plant the reproductive part is a flower flower buds are arise from axial and apical parts of the stem in a flower long stalk like structure is called pedicel we will discuss parts of a flower in a plant which are arranged on the thalamus yes the base part is nothing but thalamus the flower consists mainly four whorls which are arranged on the thalamus they are four first one is calyx second one is corolla third one is andrisium and fourth one is gynecium as see children first calyx and corolla are called accessory or non essential parts of a flower andrisium and gynecium are called essential parts of a flower why we are calling first of all on the thalamus is called calyx all sepals together called calyx the term sepal is coined from sepalum word it is derived from the greek sepalum is a leaf of the outer flower envelope in the flower function protects internal parts of the flower in bud condition and often gives support for the petals when it blooms okay second word second word on the thalamus is called corolla all petals together called corolla petals are modified leaves that surround the reproductive part of flowers petals are in different colors these colorful petals attracts the insects for pollination they are often brightly colored are unusually shaped to attract the pollinators function of the corolla attracts insects for the pollination third whorl on the thalamus is andrisium all stamens are together called andrisium okay stamen is also called as male reproductive part stamen is consists mainly two parts okay one is a filament and second part is a anther filament is a stalk like structure and it holds the anther anther contains pollen grains these are called male gametes from 
production of andesian these gametes are helps in seed formation now we will observe the pollen grain structure children a pollen grain is a microscopic structure it contains the main reproductive cell of a plant that pollen grain outer shell is made up of two layers the tough outer layer is known as exine the inside layer is called intine it is made up of cellulose and pectin pollen grain consists of two cells the vegetative cell one is a vegetative cell and the second one is a generative cell on maturity the vegetative cell is larger in size with larger amount of reserve food material next wall of the andesium is gynesium the fourth wall on the thalamus is called gynesium gynesium is also called as pistil pistil is a female reproductive part of a flower pistil consists three parts children first one stigma second one style third one ovary stigma is helps in uh, reaching it means holding the pollen grain and style it helps in the reaching the pollen to the ovary ovary contains ovules these are called female gametes function of the gynesium these gametes are helps in seed formation we will observe ovule structure it means female gamete the main body of the ovule is covered with envelope called integument what is children integument yes the outer covered envelope integument in ovule totally seven cells and eight nuclei are present the group of three cells lying towards the micropyla end is called egg operators in the egg operators the middle cell of the egg operators is known as egg cell or ovum it is a main cell which is a participating in the formation of seed and the group of three cells at the chalazole end are called antipodal cells in the center of the ovule central cell is present in that two polar nuclei are present do you know types of flowers flowers are divided into two types depending on the presence of male and female reproductive parts they are first one is unisexual and the second one is a bisexual unisexual flowers either male or female reproductive part is present in bisexual flowers both male and female reproductive parts are present first type of flowers are unisexual flowers uni means children one unisexual means one sexual part either andesium or gynesium is present in flowers the flowers contain pistil or gynesium is called pistillate flowers or female flowers flowers contain only stamens are called staminate flowers or male flowers unisexual flowers are also called as incomplete flowers unisexual flower a flower that possesses either stamens or carpels but not both children a plant possessing both male flowers and female flowers these plants are called dioecious a plant possessing only male flowers or female flowers this plant is called monoecious unisexual flowers examples are papaya cucumber coconut flowers also and watermelon etc second type of flowers are bisexual flowers bi means children two bisexual means two sexual parts are present in a flower is called bisexual flowers reproductive parts are present in these flowers it means both antisem 
and gynoecium or present in these flowers. A flower that contains both male and female reproductive structures is called bisexual flowers. Bisexual flowers are also called as complete flowers or perfect flowers because two sexual parts, it means all which are essential parts are present. That's why we can call as perfect flowers. Complete flowers with both stamens and pistil. Okay, bisexual flowers examples are datura, hibiscus, rose, sunflower, mustard, binjol and tomato etc. Children, do you know pollination? Now, we will discuss pollination. Pollination is the act of transferring pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. In pollination process, the movement of genetic material in the form of pollen grains, it is a key step in the development of seed in plants to create offspring for the next generation. Pollination is two types. One is self-pollination, second one is cross-pollination. First type of pollination is self-pollination. Children, See, transferring of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a single flower, only one flower, or two different flowers of a one plant is called self-pollination. Again, once again I am repeating, see here, transferring pollen grains from anther to stigma of a single flower or two different flowers of a plant is known as self-pollination. In cell pollination, there is no diversity in the genes and therefore the purity of the race is maintained. It means the purity of the genes, it means same characters will be transferred to the next generation. Okay. And cell pollination most probably can be seen in bisexual flowers. Okay. Previously we have discussed bisexual flowers like green jewel, tomato, etc. Yes. And the second type, second type of pollination is cross-pollination. The process of transfer pollen grains from anther to stigma, from one flower to another flower in different plants of the same species is called cross-pollination. Cross-pollination is beneficial to the race of the plants because the new variety genes, it can be observed in this pollination. Okay, so plants are preferable to this cross-pollination. It introduces new genes into their family as a result of the fertilization between the genetically different gametes. Cross-pollination most probably occurs in unisexual flowers. Example, cucumber, papaya, etc. Children, who transfer pollen grains from one flower to another flower? Yes, by pollinating agents. Yes, children, transferring of pollen grains from anther to stigma in a same flower or from one flower to another flower of same plant or one plant to another plant by pollinating agents is nothing but these are called pollinators. So, these pollinators are also called as pollinating agents. Pollinating agents are of two types. They are, first one is abiotic factors, second one is biotic factors. First type of agents are abiotic factors. What are the abiotic factors? It means, here, in environment, non-living things are called abiotic factors. Example, wind, water. First of all, we will discuss the wind. How it is a, a transmitting the pollen grains. Yes. In pollination carried out with the help of the wind, this pollination is called anemophily. What is that? Anemophily. Especially in cereals family. Cereals family means what children? Here, like rice, jowa, wheat. Okay, these are all comes under the cereals family. Cereals family plants are being 
being pollinated by wind example paddy wee jowa etc second abiotic factor is water the pollination is carried out with the help of water and it is known as hydrophily in the name itself only having hydrophily yes especially in valisn area and lotus plants first of all we will discuss in valisn area in valisn area the male flower flows on the surface of the water till it comes in contact with the female flower example valisn area lotus etc second type of agents or biotic factors in environment living organisms are called biotic factors okay why animals search for food flowers are pollinated by these animals this type of pollination is called zoophily these animals are like birds insects and bats etc children after pollination process fertilization will starts after pollination by pollinating agents male gametes fuse with the female gametes and forms zygote this process is called fertilization once again i will repeat uh, after pollination by pollinating agents male gametes fuse with female gametes and forms zygote this process is called fertilization when pollen grain reaches to stigma it produces pollen tube which passes through style reaches ovary and finally reaches ovule pollen tube contains vegetative nucleus and generative nucleus this nucleus divided into divides into this nucleus divides into two male gametes in fertilization process double fertilization occurs in angiosperms what is double fertilization yes children fusion of one male nucleus fusion with egg cell first fertilization one male nucleus fusion with egg cell and second nucleus fusion with central nucleus in the ovule this fertilization is called double fertilization in pollen tube vegetative nucleus and generative nucleus are present generative nucleus divides into two sperm cells these cells participate in fertilization first fertilization one sperm cell with egg cell it forms zygote and second fertilization another sperm cell with central cell forms endosperm during fertilization vegetative nucleus disappears in pollen tube and antipoda disappears in ovule okay during fertilization vegetative nucleus disappears in pollen tube and antipoda also in ovule disappears okay children after double fertilization formation of zygote process will starts one sperm fertilizes one egg which becomes diploid zygote the other sperm fuses with polar nuclei to form endosperm that will nourish the zygote produced after fertilization must undergo various cellular divisions and differentiations to become a mature embryo zygote develops into embryo formation this formation of embryo is called embryogenesis embryo is in diploid in stage diploid in stage means two in state okay endosperm is in triploid in stage because in the diploid stage two in state only in male cell having one nucleus in ovum cell having one nucleus it is nothing but diploid in stage okay endosperm is in triploid stage why i am calling here triploid stage because in central cell having two nuclei polar nuclei are present yes and in male nuclei male gametes in male cell having one nucleus okay 
so the polar nuclei two nuclei and uh, male gamete one nuclei three nuclei are participating in this fertilization that's why this endosperm is in triploid in stage endosperm develops into peripheral endosperm and chalagel endosperm embryo development begins with division of cells in embryo first one is two cell stage next one eight cell stage 16 cell stage then after that globular stage after that heart stage and finally it reaches maturation in detail you can learn in inter intermediate level children okay and the next one let us discuss development of seed and fruit a plant that develops seed from ovule after fertilization process a over an ovary develops an ovary develops into fruit and ovule develops into seed endosperm supplies food to embryo for develops into seed seed coat forms from ovule integuments where i said in ovule structure integuments means what the outer layers of ovule okay so the seed coat forms from ovule integuments to protect seed embryo develops into cotyledon leaves children do you know formation of seed yes formation of the seed completes the process of reproduction in plants started with the development of flowers and pollination with the embryo it is a developed from the zygote and the seed coat from the integuments it means outer layers of the ovule embryo develops into the seed and endosperm develops into fruit fruit can be eatable seeds produce new plants let us see about types of seeds in flowering plant seeds are two types based on number of cotyledon in seeds they are monocots and dicots monocots have only one cotyledon example rice wheat etc dicots have two cotyledons example peas groundnut etc children how plants are germinate in different places let us see how seed dispersal by with different agents it means the seed dispersed from one place to another place by seed can be dispersed by wind water explosions and animals do you know children we are also dispersing seeds knowingly or unknowingly after seed dispersal what will happens when there are favorable conditions seed will germinates children how plants are germinated seed germination is defined as a sum of events that begin with hydration of the seed and culminate in emergence of embryonic axis usually radical we can say embryonic axis radical from the seed coat developed embryo has five major components including shoot apical meristem hypocotyl root meristem root cap and cotyledons children let us discuss seed germination process seeds when reaches into the soil and in moisture condition start germination process in favorable conditions cotyledons are grown as hypocotyl and radical hypocotyl develops into shoot system radical develops into root system children flower plays a major role in plant life to continue their generations flowering plant life cycle if you observe the plant life cycle plant produces flowers after pollination fertilization process occurs zygote forms then develops into embryo after many cell divisions in the embryo it develops into seeds these seeds again it will be germinate and grow into a new plant see how it is a life cycle of the plant new plant grows and produces flowers again
produces seeds life cycle it will be continuous with the flowers by following sexual reproduction children now down today's thought provoking question which came first the plant or the seed ask your elders and write information which you gathered children i think you enjoyed this session finally i would like thank to our beloved secretary sir dr rs pravin kumar sir who brought the idea of reaching online classes even to rural areas i would like to convey my special thanks to my near and dear ones who helped me a lot this and their support thank you for giving this opportunity thank you